Hi, I'm going to show you how to measure brake pads and inspect brake pads using a wide variety of measuring tools. I have yet to find a single good example of how to use any of these tools to accurately measure a brake pad. Let's take a look at the individual types of tools that we have. But first, before I even talk about the tools, let's talk about the two measuring systems that we have to use. We have to use standard, and typically brake manufacturers here in North America, well, we don't like metric. I don't know why. I like metric, but other people don't. And the fact is, is we measure those in standard units of measurement based off an inch, and we break that inch down into 30 seconds of an inch. So 1 30 second, 2 30 seconds, 3 30 seconds, 4 30 seconds of an inch is how we generally break those down. We also have the metric system, which we measure in millimeters. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, we understand that some things are metric and some things are standard. That being said, there's a wide variety of tools out there to do our measurements. Some of the tools measure anything in inches and millimeters. And the fact is, is this simple tread depth gauge is actually not the right tool to use. That being said, it actually works just fine. Why do we have to use a special brake measurement gauge? I don't know, so people can sell more tools. I find this to be just fine and accurate, but the fact is, as I'm a stickler for doing things right, and the fact is, is this is not considered to be the right tool to use. Next tool we have, this guy. This is actually a brake uh, measurement gauge that is, uh, is available online. It's considered an official tool. It measures in 30 seconds of an inch, 130 seconds. So 1830 seconds all the way down to 030 seconds. This is actually considered a proper tool for state inspection in the state of Pennsylvania. Yes, it measures tread depth and it measures brake pad depth. Why it's any different than this is beyond me. Perhaps it has to do with the scale of resolution, the ease of reading. I don't know. I don't make the rules, but I'll demo them both. The next tool we have is this. This thing that looks like an ancient compass. A sextant used to find the stars, navigate the seas at night, my young man. No, I'm just kidding. It's also a brake depth measurement gauge. Uh, this one also measures in 30 seconds of an inch. Actually, it measures in 60 fourths of an inch down there. Uh, zero to one, all the way up to what looks to be 16. So we got 30 seconds of an inch here at the top. 132nd is graduations, 164th. This thing looks as old as it can be because it's old. Made in USA. Ah, I'm a good tool. I still have value in this world. But you're not metric. It doesn't matter. It's what the state wants me to use. Okay, we'll use you. Next up, we got these quick slip engages. These ones right here, let me flip them around this way. Uh, they got metric and standard measurements, but of course they're not in 30 seconds of an inch. They're in decimal, so you actually have to do some math. That was a good year, 1969. Uh, but we use these to do a quick customer. Hey, Mr. Customer, your brake pads are in the red. You need brake pads. Hey, Mrs., you need brake pads soon. This is yellow. Hey, lady, this is good. This is green. I don't know. It's a simple way to just quickly measure the rough thickness. However, it is not a brake inspection tool. It's just a quick gauge. Next up, we have two very accurate measuring tools. We have the dial caliper and the digital dial caliper. Yes, this is a legit Matoyo digital dial caliper. It is not cheap and it is uh, certified and super duper accurate. It is not one of the clone copies. It's the real deal. Okay, so first and foremost, this guy right here, this quickie slippy tool. This goes in between the brake pad friction material and the brake rotor. And the fact is, is it does an okay job of sort of, sort of determining the thickness of the brake pad. It's good to show customers that it's go, no go kind of gauge. They sort of get it, but the fact is, is I've seen a handful of people 
manage to screw these up. Okay, and the reason why they screw them up is because it's not really an accurate way to measure brake pad thickness. It sort of works. It's good for a quick inspection. You slip this in between the pad and the rotor, and it works fine. But it's not a brake inspection tool as certified by the state of Pennsylvania, at least as far as I know. So unless somebody wants to tell me different, you're not really supposed to use these. But a lot of people do, and frankly, it's better than nothing. The nice thing is, of course, you can slip this in through the brake pad inspection window and the caliper, get your measurement. But here's the problem. We're actually supposed to remove the pads to inspect them. Why do we move the, remove the pads? Well, because you can't see that this pad's cracked when you just take your little slippy tool here and you're like, oh no, your brakes are in good shape. Look at that, you're in the green. That brake is fine. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, it's not. You're gonna die, okay? Same thing with this, with the old school riveted pads. You can't really see damage very well. Well, you could on this one if you're really astute. But the fact is, is they want us to take the pads uh, out of the caliper and visually inspect them for any types of damage. Hmm, those pads are cracked. They're no good. You need new pads. Oh, but there's plenty of meat on them. Burr, burr, burr. Well, that could be the cause of the noise. I would have never seen that unless I had taken the pads apart. So the fact is, is to do an accurate brake pad thickness measurement, you take the pads out. Yeah, I know. You're like, but I got a tool. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. That's not how you're supposed to do it. I'm here to tell you how to do it. Okay. So we're going to run a little test here. <clears throat> we're going to uh, write down some numbers here on this pad. Move that out of the way. But we're going to try these different types of measuring tools. And, I, you know, th these two right here, these are kind of, you know, consider the right tools that you're supposed to use. My, my issue is, is I've always had an issue with this not reading accurately. Um, part of it's the way that you zero it out uh, versus this. Um, and, you know, with all of these gauges, you know, even tread depth gauge, you know, when you have this thing on zero, when it's flat, it's it's on zero. You know, it, it's there. You know, it's on zero. Yeah, there's some parallax perception there, but it's zero for the most part, okay? This guy, you push it down against a hard surface, um, right there, it's also on zero, right there, that's flush on the inside, and that little arm is on zero. And this, <clears throat> this right here, you have the scale with 30 seconds of an inch and 60 fourths uh, graduations, doesn't do metric, okay, and it has a these pinchy pings right there, okay, and the idea is that when this is on zero, Okay, when you open this up here, the measurement appears there. And that in theory works pretty well, but let's let's try it. So here I have a riveted brake pad. Okay, and the way that you're supposed to use this is you're supposed to put this on the rivet. Okay, so it goes through the rivet and you're supposed to put this on zero. And the idea is that this tool is now on zero. And when I close this, that needle moves with it, okay? And then I'm supposed to put this back here and I measure the thickness of the pad from the backing plate. But the problem is, is the rivet is actually below the backing plate of the pad. And so this reads eight thirty seconds of an inch, okay? And just to, you know, if I put this back in the hole right here, okay, there we go. It's back on zero now. The other way that you can use this tool is you can measure the backing plate. So you put the backing plate on, you put it on zero, right? And then you measure the thickness of the overall pad like that. And it measures eight. So the fact is, is this tool, you know, is saying it's eight thirty seconds of the pad thickness, which is right, according to that tool. So write that down. Okay, so that was 8.30 seconds of an inch for pad thickness. And if I take this guy and I measure this to here, okay, put that on there. What have I got? There's 30 seconds, there's 8, 8.30 seconds. It's right there on the line, so it's also 8.30 seconds. Now if I put this inside and I measure to the rivet, look at that, it's a little different. 
I push this down, and now, instead of 8 30 seconds, it is reading closer to somewhere between 5 and 6. 5 and 6 30 seconds of an inch. Now that, to me, is a more realistic measurement because that's going to go down to the rivet. That's really the base of my 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 pad, not the backing plate. <laughs> so my issue with that tool is that there's no, it never reads right because the real number is like somewhere between five and six. So if I take this right here, okay, and I measure this, and if I do it the wrong way, if I go here, can okay, you measure the thickness there? And I look at it here, oh my God, I have eight. Okay, it's 8.30 seconds. I measure it into the rivet hole into the rivet, I have five. So to measure this in the rivet hole is the way to do it. And again, if I set this up, the problem is, is that is recessed. It is not flush with the backing plate. So if you measure the pad, set this on zero, and then you measure the thickness of the pad, uh, it's close enough. It's about eight. It's a little bit off. Not too far gone. There, measure the thickness of the plate. It's eight. So, the problem is, <clears throat> is this is measuring the overall thickness, not the actual thickness. I don't like this tool when you use it that way. It's important that when you measure, you do measure within the rivet hole, push down to get your measurement because that's really the bottom. That's the bottom of the pad, not the bagging plate, right? Okay, so now that we have that out of the way. This tool, frankly, I think it's kind of a waste. Uh, it's not really good for riveted pads. It's not accurate. Okay. Another way that we can measure, it's old school. Okay, I can zero this guy out. Take that back. I can put that in the tail right there and push down, flush against the surface. And I have a uh, 182 thousandths of an inch. Okay, and if we want to go super nerdy, turn on the super nerd here, open it, close it, zero it out. Put it in the tail, give it a quick slide, measure the depth, and a <clears throat> couple, couple thou off there, but not a big jumping up and down. So in terms of accuracy, this guy, the state inspection tool number one, the pinch dial, that's junk. It's so far off. The rest of these are so close. <laughs> um... I, I don't even want to say that this is a good tool to use for a riveted pad. It's just not good. Okay. The state tool, this one right here, the one that they actually want us to use, is accurate. Um, I can understand because it's got this nice long fulcrum, so it's got nice resolution here on the end of the scale. But this guy does, in fact, work um, as accuracy. I mean, there's some parallax perception issues, and I guess... Somebody could mess up the numbers because they're looking at millimeters or they don't really understand how to read a trend depth gauge. But the uh, the dial calipers, they they worked fine. They're certainly accurate. Okay, you have to do some math to convert it to a 32nd of an inch, but it works. All right, so let's <clears throat> let's take a look at using a uh, these tools to measure another another type of brake pad here. We're gonna measure. Uh, we'll measure, measure this guy. Now, a couple things here to make a quick note about. The, um, shim on this has a, has a thickness. Has a thickness, right? When you go to use a measuring tool, what you don't want to do, and I've seen people, you know, do this, is they come in and... You know, they're like, oh, you can measure the thickness of your brake pad. I'll zero that down. At. And they go, oh, you measure that, right? And then you write that number down, and then you measure this, and you subtract that from that. Well, I just I just threw the shim out, 
right? You, you can't you can't get the caliper on there. You're like, oh, I could use the ears. I could do it this way. Yeah, you could, but that's not really super accurate. I'm gonna guess it works, but what are you gonna do anyway? So I'm not I'm not crazy about that. What you can do is uh, in my book is you could use the tail, right? The tail of the, uh, the mic there. Get your reading close enough, right? Uh, you can use the tread depth gauge, which is not the proper tool. You got to be aware it gets really tight here on the edge, and you know you want to make sure that you're on there good and square. Uh, get that on there square like that. What do we have? We have focus. Here we go. What do I got? Five millimeters. Uh, Seven thirty seconds, right? So if we take this guy. If we just want to play with this here, About five thirty seconds, five thirty seconds. We see that was five mil. Put that up there. A little bit of taper. Yeah, right there is pretty good. About five mil. So again, this is not. These are not my favorite. Uh, these are cheapy plastic ones. <clears throat> they work, but uh, not really an accurate state tool. Neither is this. Neither are the, the mics. But pinchy guy, mm, old pinchy, old pinchy. <coughs> All right. Take old pinchy here. Put pinchy right there on the backing plate. And this, again, this is where this tool, in my opinion, kind of sucks, right? You'd set it to zero. And now when I go to measure the thickness of the pad, the problem is, is I'm on that shim. <coughs> And this guy is, you know, almost eight thousandths of an inch. Really, I want to be here, not against the shim. So you got to be careful about that. And look at that. Now it's at almost uh, six and a half. So six thousand six thirty seconds of an inch is that guy right there. All right, but you got to be careful. This one's easy to mess up. This one. This is what the state wants you to use. Put that on there flat, measure that up there, all nice and special. And personally, I think this tool is just a kind of not all that fantastic. Really, don't really dig it very much. But what do we got there? Six, 630 seconds? All right, let's measure this guy again. Come on up here, try that tool that is wrong. And what do we have there? Yeah, see, this is saying 7.30 seconds. A little bit of discrepancy there. Check it one more time. Put it right on the edge. Just like that. Yep. Between 6 and 7, right there on the shoulder. Look at that. Hmm. Interesting. All right. And then finally, we'll measure this with the tail. We'll measure this. Okay, come in here, we'll measure like so. There we go. We switch this over to millimeters. Boop, 4.8, close to five, what the uh, cheapy gauge measured. Another thing, <laughs> when you have a brake pad with slots, uh, some manufacturers say to measure it to the base of the slot. Right there. We got 630 seconds. And then other manufacturers say to measure it at the edge of the pad. Now this one, you can't really sit it flat. There we go. And when you push that down, that's the crazy thing. And we'll check this for taper. I have uh, uh, 730 seconds. Okay. We measure this side. Measure this end right here. Push that down. And I have... Again, 7, 30 seconds. So this pad doesn't have any taper. But again, you know, if we measure it the way that some manufacturers want us to measure in the slot, it comes up 6. 
So the fact is, is that that distance right there, that's one thirty second of an inch. Um, you know, that's a make or break for some state inspections. So, uh, truth be told, there's multiple ways to measure a brake pad. Um, your mileage may vary. I really, you know, I've been doing this for a while. And the fact is, is that, um, you know, most people just, they take the tool and they just kind of go like this and they go, eh, that's where your brake pad is. And they write that number down and, and that's kind of the end of the day. Um, you know, you really do have to pull the pads to, to accurately, you know, get a good measurement with them. The, you know, the, the cheapy kind of quickie sort of these things, I mean, they're okay. They're, you know, again, to just tell a customer, hey, just a quick, not taking the brakes apart, eyeball kind of thing. They work, but um, I'm going to say I like this. And then, of course, uh, you know, this is probably the easiest out of everything to use. And I do get it. I mean, it is. it does have a much better scale than than this, you know, in terms of, of thousands of an inch. Or, or I'm sorry, <laughs> 30 seconds of an inch. It's been a long day. Um, so I get it. I mean, I, I, I do, I do get it. I do get the resolution. Um, I guess this would be kind of my favorite tool to use. Gotta admit, I didn't expect that when I started this. But there you go. Multiple ways to measure a brake pad. This guy, not my favorite tool. This guy, definitely a better tool. This good for a quick brake inspection on the car without taking the pads out but again for state inspection this is the guy you want to use thanks for watching